Welcome and thank you everybody for joining us for this session on research funders as both beneficiaries and enablers of change. How can we work together to help shape the grid ecosystem? Uh, we're, we really like our second slide, the pits for this talk. It's also my first time at Pita Palooza. I shared the Google a Google Doc and there's also the link to the presentation. So we have the DOI for our presentation, which is up on Zenodo if you like to follow along at your own pace. Um, I'll invite Clifford to introduce himself and his pit. Um, yes, hello. Uh, I work at SURF in the innovation group um, as an independent consultant on various PID projects. I'm also a researcher at CWTS at Leiden University. And my focus there is on infrastructures of openness in relation to evolving research evaluation practices. And just a quick thank you to Ed and Matthew for uh, <laughs> being here. Uh, and I'm Maria Cruz. I work at the Dutch Research Council uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, so I'm talking to you from the Netherlands today. I'm a, a policy advisor, Open Science. Um, so the, the outline for the session, uh, so we'll do a quick introduction. Uh, we'll continue with introductions. Um, and then I'll be giving you some uh, uh, funder context con background about uh, funders and pits. Uh, Clifford will then present our NVO pit strategy and NVO is the Dutch Research Council and then uh, hopefully we'll have 10 minutes left to do some uh, collaboration and engagement through the Google Doc. But you, if you, you, you are welcome to, to, be, to go to the Doc already, but we'll use it later for uh, discussion. Uh, and um, so I'm going to just introduce NVO, the Dutch Research Council. Because we are going to, as I explained, Clifford is going to present uh, our PIT strategy. Um, on which uh, both uh, Clifford and I worked on last year. Uh, so uh, NVO is the main research funder in the Netherlands and it funds primarily uh, scientific research at public research institutions in the Netherlands. And in numbers, it's close to 1 billion euros um, total expenditure in research funding. These are figures from our uh, last latest annual report from 2019. Uh, on any given year, we have about uh, 7,200 uh, research projects in progress or completed in 2019. And in 2019, uh, we awarded uh, yeah, close to 1,900 awards. And these go to people, projects, and uh, infrastructure, all in, in research, of course. Now, we want to learn a little bit more about yourselves and if, Ed, if you could bring up the poll, uh, so if we could get a feel for what type of institution, organization you are affiliated with, that would be great. Thank you very much. So we'll, we'll just give half a minute for people to have the chance to uh, to answer the poll. So you'll find the poll at the bottom of the screen in between ask a question and people if, if you haven't seen it yet. Um, I'm seeing the results just by having the poll open. Um, oh, both or other, yeah. Sorry, this is a, a very, um, yeah, if, if you're affiliated with more than two organizations, well, just pick one, maybe the one where you spend most of your time. But it seems uh, in any case, we have, um, uh, yeah, we, we have um, people from all sorts of, um, organizations, research funders, research performing organizations, service providers, and other um, 
Oh yeah, if you're other, add in the chat. Yes, thanks, thanks, Ed. Uh, I think uh, I'll keep going with the presentation. Um, everybody can see the results uh, of the poll just by clicking on the poll. Thank you very much. So, as I said, I, I'm just going to give a little background to funders and PITs. Uh, funders as beneficiaries of PITs and enablers of change. Um, so, funders collect, collect a lot of information about research activities, as you've seen in the, the slide about NVO. Yeah, we fund people, uh, infrastructure, uh, projects. So we collect information about people, about their organizations, about the projects and their outputs. But we struggle uh, to put this information to optimal use, uh, both in, in, in our uh, processes or for strategic decision making. Just, just as a quick examples of some of the issues, well, issues that PIDs can help with. We've heard yeah, people and name disambiguation of people and their organizations. And we've heard, we've heard in the previous uh, talk about ORCIDs and how, how that can help. But indeed, uh, we, collect, we collect a lot of uh, names, and, and, but sometimes we don't know uh, if, if, if it's the same people or, or different people. Uh, and, and, and that makes, um, sometimes makes uh, processes more difficult internally. And another big issue for funders is linking of, of the people and the organizations we fund to the grants and the outputs of funded projects. So often we don't understand very well uh, the outcomes of funded, funded projects. And PITS, uh, implementing PITS uh, really holds prom it, it can really help with simplifying grant processes. For example, if you ask for somebody's ORCID, instead of asking them also for their CV or for their affiliation, you could just um, uh, get the information from ORCID. And uh, if by linking uh, PITs, you can also increase capacity to monitor funded projects. And research funders are also considered, um, have a lot of power to promote change. This is a quote from a report from uh, a report from the European Commission on the Future of Scholarly Publishing and Scholarly Communication. Uh, for example, here in the Netherlands, there have been uh, ORCID campaigns. In, in, in some universities, the campaigns um, led to 80% uptake of ORCID, but some uh, researchers basically just registered an ORCID, but they never used it. And if NVO would say, uh, we now ask researchers to add an ORCID to their application, uh, proposals, then th there's an incentive for researchers to use their ORCID. Uh, I'll now hand over to Clifford, although I'll keep um, moving the slides along. So Clifford will now present our, the NVO PID strategy. Thanks, Maria. Um, so uh, the first thing I want to mention is that uh, the PID strategy has two parts. Uh, a PID part and an engagement part. And uh, we're going to try to give you a, an impression of this in a short period of time so that we can address the, the question, the main question in our title. Uh, this first slide is a, uh, an impression of the uh, Dutch PID landscape. And uh, I won't go through these. It probably looks familiar to others who uh, look at uh, PIDs at a national level. But uh, I want to make two points. One is that um, all of these emerged uh, independently in very situated contexts. So ORCID is, of course, national, but uh, others are uh, library or um, in particular uh, research domains. So, so they operate independently and, and without much coordination among them. And um, taking this, uh, we take this into consideration in thinking about um, the uh, Dutch Research Council strategy. Um, yeah, next slide, please. So uh, the Dutch Research Council works with three fundamental kinds of information that form the basis for most workflows uh, related to funded projects, uh, information about researchers, about organizations, and about grants. Um, and um, yeah, these are fairly straightforward. So uh, next slide, please. 
so uh, broadly, the aims of um, implementing these PIDs are to uh, improve research monitoring and analytics, uh, provide a structured input um, in, a, in a national level knowledge base for research, and in some ways to provide a model uh, for promoting PID practice uh, more broadly within uh, the Netherlands. Uh, next slide. So uh, the engagement piece has national and international, of course. And uh, the plan is for the Dutch Research Council to join the uh, existing ORCID NL consortium, um, which includes all of the uh, Dutch uh, research universities and participate, specifically participate in the uh, consortium working group where there's a lot of experience in uh, implementing PIDs, but also uh, provides a venue for uh, dissemination of the, the funders plan and also coordination of um, data transfers, which is quite cumbersome at the moment um, as uh, the, the university CRIS systems are the, the um, obvious place to do that, but uh, it's quite difficult. So we think uh, this would improve uh, the situation. Um, and the other national uh, uh, part of the plan is um, to participate in a Netherlands PID advisory board, which is uh, currently under development, but uh, it would be tasked with maintaining a, a current account of Dutch PID pri priorities while also um, keeping an eye on um, national and international developments. So this is a very a dynamic space and um, trying to hold a long-term strategy is quite difficult. So uh, uh, it's about uh, monitoring uh, uh, new developments as well. Uh, next strategy, Let's see. So uh, the international piece, uh, I want to first, um, yes, so uh, of course, research is uh, global, not just local. So it's important to um, uh, collaborate or coordinate uh, these efforts uh, internationally. And um, uh, the idea is to um, try to coordinate uh, PID practices and strategies and to, to uh, collaborate in a um, among or with research uh, funder organizations, either in Europe or uh, more broadly, internationally. Um, next slide. Thank you. But um, in terms of the aims of this, uh, I want to uh, first frame it with uh, what we see as an affordance of the funder participation uh, in this strategy in particular. And that is uh, the funder use case um, offers a clear definition of the full life cycle of a well-defined uh, research project um, by its nature. Uh, and it's also temporally and financially bounded. Um, this means that uh, you know it has a start date, an end date, uh, a set uh, amount of funds, and um, a consequence of this is that these projects, although they're quite different and in different uh, disciplines, they tend to follow a particular pattern from an information standpoint. So uh, we think that's a, a, a way to uh, think about a broader PID strategy um, and also try to address some of the more fragmented elements of the, of the national landscape. Uh, so participate in shaping the national practices and priorities. Um, but, uh, but internationally, it's unclear. Uh, we, so we pose the question, what role can funders play to help? Um, uh, let's see, uh, next slide. So um, I, I just throw this up. I think this is the last uh, content slide to um, highlight some of the, the either ongoing or past funder related PID collaborations. There's of course Orbit, um, which was completed, but as we understand, uh, will be followed up again uh, to help um, organize uh, funders. Uh, the Harmonization Group was a spin-off of Orbit to harmonize content and grant applications. And Crossref has had uh, a, um, an advisory group for Fundref, and which was re resurrected for the grant ID activities. Um, and all of these have done uh, uh, fantastic work in bringing some um, continuity across 
uh, at least the thinking among the funders or like-minded th funders. Um, but we, we were thinking maybe it's time to think about um, at, a, at a higher level, maybe a strategic level, uh, how we might participate. And uh, some of the ideas include um, uh, indeed uh, the role of PIDs in a um, open infrastructure context. Um, and uh, along these lines, there's a lot of attention in the Netherlands uh, towards an, uh, a national um, open knowledge base. So that is the idea is creating a database with all of the uh, metadata from all Dutch research that is uh, open and available to analyze um, and to feed other kinds of uh, systems. Um, next slide. But we, but we uh, would very much like feedback of, um, of how um, you all think about this and what role a funder could take or funders in helping to shape uh, this broader uh, landscape. And we've, we've written the question in, uh, in two ways. One is from a funder standpoint, what are your PID ambitions and what are the main obstacles? And also from stakeholders. Uh, we learned from the um, ORCID consortium that um, universities and institutions are um, quite eager to um, understand how funders are operating so that they can help um, it would help inform their own local strategies about orchid and pids um, and the way we would like to facilitate that is with a google doc so that we can uh, collect the information um, the link the, is on the chat as well the link to the google doc has been posted yes, uh, yes. The link is posted there. Um, so the idea is for you to um, pick which category, uh, stakeholder, you know, the other or funder, um, uh, make suggestions, um, pose um, challenges, you know, challenge the idea. Uh, and we would like to put that Google Doc on the screen here um, and ask Ed, Ed to help us um, um, look for uh, questions or comments or, or suggestions that uh, need elaboration or maybe a couple mm -hmm. of suggestions that fit together. Yeah, if one of you would be able to share your yeah. screen showing the Google Doc, you can do that. And also we did have a question in the Q&A from Chris Schillam. Uh, <clears throat> is there a risk that your goal to promote research analytics could discourage research or use of PIDs? Um, I think that that, uh, let's see, what's the best expression? That, uh, <laughs> um, the door is already open for that. Um, we're engaging with commercial parties uh, whereby, um, well, I'll just say it. Uh, you, you, you probably all know that um, in the Netherlands, there's a, an agreement with Elsevier where uh, we've uh, trade uh, full open access of Elsevier uh, publications. Uh, for uh, giving them full access to all Dutch research um, metadata for the purpose of analytics. <laughs> so I, I think it's a, a very good question, Chris, uh, but I think we're past that. At least that's, that's my impression. In other so, words, I think so it's already happening. <laughs> it's already happening and there, there isn't a big backlash <laughs> in, in the Netherlands anyway, right? At the, at the moment, right. Okay. <laughs> There's also, I mean, it, it will also streamline uh, processes and, and, and that will also uh, reduce work and pr reduce um, admin work for researchers. At the moment, researchers have to add, uh, register their outputs in multiple uh, places. Uh, so this will also make it easier for researchers. It's not just about analytics. And in, for example, with ORCID, researchers will also authorize or not whether they want that data to be shared or, or shared. Can you uh, sc scroll up on the documents if? Yeah, uh, I don't see so much in it yet. Um, okay. I'm looking at uh, another window, so I can scroll down to funders. Um, 
Yeah, we, we, we see here, I see here something about yeah, repetitive form filling here in the nonce funder stakeholder. And I must say here in the Netherlands, there's a lot of debate uh, about uh, reducing uh, pressure for researchers uh, because there's a lot of um, uh, complaints about uh, the, you know, writing, uh, writing um, grants. And so the, the more we can do to make life easier to, for uh, applicants, the better. Um, while we have a moment, uh, Ed, I, I wonder, uh, <laughs> we're, we're lucky to have you as a monitor, but I, may I ask you a question as, uh, as uh, from the Crossref perspective? Sure. Um, uh, from the Grant ID um, advisory group or in the activities you have around the Grant ID, um, do you have any insight to what um, funders are, uh, how they might be aligning uh, around um, grant ID processes or or maybe resisting uh, alignment? Yeah, that's a good question. And we are going to be um, uh, uh, reconvening the funder group, uh, our funder group as well. But we're also talking with uh, ORCID uh, and, and Datasite about trying to coordinate some of our work because I think from your presentation and other presentations over the last few days, couple of days, you know, that that's that's one of the issues, right? That that in some ways we're slightly we're at, interacting with funders in all, all different ways. So I think that's one thing to note is that is that we as uh, infrastructure organizations are uh, are are you know looking looking to coordinate <clears throat> and um, and then of course going through the um, the process in terms of uh, adding grants to uh, to to Crossref, obviously there's uh, uh, there was a lot of work on on what metadata to collect, uh, and I know that a lot of uh, the fu the funders who are engaging initially are are looking at that, and it's a lot to do with their own internal uh, systems, right, and being able to get the correct metadata and have a landing page, and go, you know going through some of those issues, and um, a number of the funders who st started doing that are are you know fairly well along, but then there's a long tail of funders. Uh, right, who haven't started to engage on that on that level, and so it's I see it sort of uh, build bu uh, bu building up slowly. Uh, but one thing we want to try to talk to funders about more is what you know what what once it starts flowing, we have some grants registered, but uh, it's going to uh, be in the next update of the Crossref API that that'll all be disseminated, and then there'll be a lot of discussions then around what what's uh, what's the best way to disseminate the metadata. Um, well. Um, and, uh, you, you remind me that uh, I had the opportunity to talk with Chris uh, Shulam the other day, um, and he mentioned, um, this is related to our ORCID consortium, and he mentioned the interest in, and if, if not plan, but I, I understood as a plan, um, for ORCID as Crossref and data site to, uh, and I think this is what you're talking about a little bit, uh, to, to, uh, to work together about uh, coordinate uh, it, you know, if not uh, the, the technical side, but I think that was implied. Um, also, things about uh, particular groups. So, the, mm -hmm. so the question I have, and Chris is welcome to respond here too, is: uh, Can you imagine a um, such a a group uh, focused on funders with all three um, included? So, Crossref, Orchid, and Data Site. So we have yeah. <laughs> yes, the main I, pieces, I, right? Yes, yes. No, I, th I, th I think that's the, I, th I think that's a good idea. <laughs> so I think we could, we could take it as an action and uh, uh, yeah, to, for, for us to, we've already started some discussions about that, but, uh, but, but come up with something uh, a little bit uh, more, more concrete uh, so that we can, even if we're discussing slightly different issues, just obviously because the, the engagement with the different systems involves slight, slight, slightly different things that we could, can certainly coordinate it. Uh, better uh, and 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 align what we're doing. You know, we've we've already done it with publications to some extent, and we're going to be looking at that in more detail so that when uh, content get re gets registered with Crossref for data site and the ORCID IDs are included, then um, the uh, it automatically pushes to the to the ORCID record, and uh, obviously some similar types of functionality to make it easier for researchers 
to do what they do and have things happen in an automated way. Uh, yeah. So, so as Chris says in the chat, er, er, early talks, and yeah, we we just want to make it easier. And there, yeah, there's a good case yeah, for doing that. Uh, that sounds uh, great, and I, I, I like what you're saying. And but I would also suggest that uh, one of the benefits would be, and I think this would be for uh, you all, is um, setting expectations. Um, you know, first. <laughs> Um, when certain kinds of features uh, would be available, and it would help align, I think, uh, naturally, funders around uh, planning, and uh, and and certainly understanding that this does imply uh, backend uh, work on everyone's part, probably to to get either translations or, you know, uh, similar approaches. Yeah, no, and I think that's a good point. And Cross Crossref again has a commitment to to update its API for disseminating this information. And as as we start to engage, uh, we we've already had some some more feedback about the schema, right? And different funders have maybe have slightly different needs in terms of metadata and things like that. So so there is there is some some basic work like that going on, and uh, that that's been uh, productive, and we're eager to move that forward. But I but I think there's also then. Some broader discussions around well, you know, when 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 we uh, have the uh, grants and publications and uh, authors and uh, organizations all all connected up, yeah, what 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 will that enable, you know, and uh, and, and how we can how we how can we make it easier for funders to engage with our organizations. So, uh, yeah, so this is this is well well timed to bring it up here. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry for taking advantage of your uh, your presence here. No, no, happy, happy you did. Yeah. Okay. Good. Great. So I th I think we're yeah we're coming we have a few, uh, just a, a couple couple of minutes uh, left and I see that uh, there's I think there's been more going on in the in the document but uh, but obviously that'll remain open right. Um, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, thank you for uh, thank you to everyone who has uh, contributed to the document. It's uh, really interesting feedback. And just to say as well that the uh, NVO paid strategy is not public yet. Uh, we thought we were hoping to have a public uh, document to share, but it has we haven't been able to uh, pass it through our board yet. Uh, also because of uh, all the delays with the uh, with the pandemic, but we are hoping that perhaps uh, in March we'll be able to publish it. Great, thank you very much. Uh, well, that's that's perfect timing. Uh, I think we can can then bring this uh, session to the end. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank thank you very much for your for your contributions. And uh, yeah, thanks to all the other speakers we had uh, dur during this session. And uh, uh, take take care. Thanks. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. 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 -bye. Thanks.